Carmen looked like she just ran into the chat. Hi everyone, we are so glad you're here. Um, we're going <clears> to <throat> give everyone a couple of minutes to log in and settle in. Uh, so bear with us as we wait for individuals to log into the webinar. Okay, we'll give it another minute for um, to allow everyone to log in. All right, let's get started. Welcome everyone to our Duke webinar series and specifically our Pat in Focus webinar series. We're so happy that you're here. We have some great panelists today to answer your questions about Pratt. Um, welcome, so let's get started. All right. So before we begin, uh, we would like to inform you that Duke encourages persons with disabilities to participate in its programs and activities. If you would like to request accommodation services for an information session, uh, please contact Adela Hackett at adela.hackett at duke.edu or 919-684-0186 to arrange these for a later date. Now, this session is going to be recorded and will be available on our YouTube channel at the link provided. Um, so if you miss anything, miss any content, miss any answers to any questions, you can always back, go back to the video to find the answers to your questions or take another look or provide and, or share this um, video with others. But we also encourage you to look at our other virtual programming that is available. As you can see, there's a list of various virtual programs that we are offering um, this fall and for the spring. Um, if you um, use the QR code that's on the screen, it will take you directly um, to our webpage um, so you can sign up to attend these virtual programs. And again, a lot of these virtual programs have been recorded and are on our YouTube page if you want to spend some time watching those videos as well. All right, so for today, uh, we are so happy that you're here. We are going to be having a Pratt and Focus panel uh, with three amazing pa panelists. We want to encourage you to ask um, our panelists any questions that you may have in the Q&A tab. I will be taking questions from the audience um, for the panel to answer live, but some questions will be answered by our colleagues um, that are also joining us to answer your questions directly in the chat. Um, if you are having any technical issues, please let us know in the chat. Now to the panelists. Our wonderful panelists for today are the academic dean um, for undergraduates in the Pratt School of Engineering. We have this, um, Ben Cook, Carmen Roth, Lupita Tmikel, um, Millen here to join us to answer all your questions. And let me... Um, Show you the screen. Second. All right. All right. Perfect. All right. Well, welcome so much. I'm so glad you guys are here with us. Very excited to get to chat with you about Pratt. Um, and if we can get just started by introducing yourselves one by one. Um, ben, if you would like to go first. My name is Ben Cook. Uh, I've been at Duke for a while, I came for grad school um, in math, 
and then I worked in the academic resource center for a while and taught math and now I'm an academic dean in Pratt. Uh, I've been in Pratt for three years um, or almost three years. All right, Carmen. Hi everyone. So my name is Carmen Rolls. Um, I've been at Duke um, almost 10 years and I've been an academic dean um, for over six. I also uh, work with undergraduate students on undergraduate research opportunities. All right, Lupita. Hey everyone, uh, I'm Lupita Tamikel McMillan. I am, um, <clears throat> I've been at Duke for 15 years and I've been an academic dean for about 11 years now. And um, I work with a lot of the uh, student affairs offices on campus. So I'm the liaison to the student affairs area. Welcome everyone, thanks for having us. Amazing, thank you so much. Now to begin, I am very interested in getting to know you three a little bit more. So could you each individually go and talk about um, your pathways to Pratt School of Engineering at Duke? Um, who would like to start? I'll start. Um, so as I said, I, I came here 15 years ago. My background um, is not in engineering and uh, I'm actually, uh, my undergraduate degree was in social work, uh, but I did my master's degree in higher education administration. So I worked in student affairs pretty much my entire career um, at Miami of Ohio, at Northwestern University, and I came to Duke 15 years ago. Um, I have been in the engineering school the entire time here. Uh, when I came, I came as a student affairs um, program coordinator. So I worked with student organizations and uh, did all the student affairs work for specifically the engineering school. And then ultimately um, became an academic dean around 11 years ago, where um, then I, I've been here ever since. So I'm not an engineer, but I can tell you what classes you need to take and what paths there are. Um, I really enjoy working with engineering students and uh, yeah, just happy to, to keep going another, another 15 years, hopefully. <laughs> Thank you, Lupita. Carmen? Um, in my case, um, I, I do have an engineering background. So my, my undergraduate is in civil engineering. Um, my master's, um, well, and my bachelor's was originally from Puerto Rico, where I'm from. Um, my master's was in University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign in transportation engineering. And my PhD was from Cornell University in transportation systems and logistics. Um, I started at Duke um, working on research and then uh, became an academic dean um, and um, advising students, same as Lupita, you know, telling students uh, what courses to take and uh, depending on their career goals, but also, like I mentioned earlier, um, getting them involved in undergraduate research while um, at Duke um, so that they can explore a little bit more in-depth topics within their major. Thank you, Carmen. Ben? Um, so I, I came to Duke for grad school. So I, I was an undergrad. I grew up in Washington, D.C. And then I went to undergrad at MIT um, and majored in math. And then came to Duke for grad school in math and realized in grad school that I liked working with students a lot and like teaching, but not doing independent research. Um, and so I took a job in the Academic Resource Center supporting students and also teaching math. Um, and I worked there for about 10 years um, at, at Duke before moving over to, to Pratt in the academic re dean role where I also support students um, and have a lot of one-on-one -on -one meetings with students. And that's kind of the um, part of the, I mean, the best part of the job is, is kind of working with students who are excited to learn, who are kind of passionate about what they're doing and um, and kind of discovering kind and, and kind of helping them take advantage of the opportunities at Duke, uh, which are there a lot of. Um, and it's been it's been great um, being back in person this year. That's been nice to meet students in person. It's a little bit hard to uh, meet students uh, in over Zoom who are kind of you know to support students uh, over the 
the computer, but uh, it's been nice to kind of get back to a little bit of getting to see my colleagues in person in the office um, this year, which has been, been nice. Awesome, thank you, Ben. Um, well, going off of that, why don't um, you start by sharing um, a little bit about your role as an academic dean and how does your role help support um, students specifically? Like what is your day-to-day -day, um, as an academic dean? All right, I'll jump in on that. So we have a lot of one-on-one -on -one meetings with students. Um, students can schedule meetings through Calendly. We each have our own, well, it's, we all kind of use about the same process to have students schedule meetings. Um, usually students can get a meeting within a couple of days or a week. Um, sometimes we get busy around registration. It takes a little, like it's, it's a little bit more than a week, but usually we're pretty available. Um, and um, students, you know, we, we meet with students for lots of reasons. Um, a lot of the reasons are, uh, you know, ac well, all the reasons are academic related, but um, like mm -hmm. courses to take, if you're if you're deciding between two majors in those first two years, um, we kind of have a sense of the classes you need to take to kind of stay on track for different majors. Um, sorry, it's, it's bedtime. We have four kids and they're going through bath time and bedtime at the moment. So you may hear them in the background, but um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, just a lot of a lot of one on one meetings with students. And then we have kind of more like university meetings that we each go to um, and some staff meetings. Um, and I have a kind of a kind of data role. So I, during course evaluation seasons, I have some things to do with that. Um, and also kind of looking at I think one thing we all like to feel like is that, you know, if there are um, like lots of students experiencing the same kind of barriers we're trying to we're we have potential to help a lot of students at once um and so i think in these in our role we can kind of communicate um the types of things that students are experiencing and then and do a good job of supporting students not just one at a time yeah i'll just add on to that um all duke students are assigned an academic dean so when you come to duke you will be, whether in Trinity or Pratt, everyone has an academic dean. And right now our model is that we follow students for four years. So you will get your academic dean when you walk in the door and we will be your academic dean uh, when you walk out the door. So, um, and as, as uh, Dean Cook said, we follow you, your academics. Um, you know, we're, we're kind of, a, we're not necessarily the person to go to for everything, but we are the person who, if you don't know where to go, you can come to us to start and we can help find the right person if it's not us. Um, so we can help triage, you know, any situation that you have, help guide you through that. And we follow your academics. Um, as Dean Cook said, we have meetings with students one-on-one. -on -one, so we will um, reach out to students who, um, we, students of concern, if you're having any type of personal issues that are impacting your academics. Um, we try to help uh, in any way that we can to offer relief or help facilitate conversations that are important to have, things like that. And we track your graduation requirements. Right now, we're about to start looking at all of our seniors that are set to graduate in May, and we're going to go through every single student through every single requirement to make sure they are meeting them or that they're registered for what they need in this final semester. So a lot of um, academic tracking, a lot of um, kind of personal issues where, you know, we're not necessarily the counselor, but we can help get you to a counselor if you're not able to get there yourself. Um, so we try to be very student-centered, very whole student. We are concerned about all aspects of your lives and particularly how they impact your academics. Um, and so when they do impact your academics, we're there as a resource to you. Awesome, thank you so much. Now let's turn to the academic portion, right? Because we want to know more about Pratt as an academic institution. Um, so can one of you take us through four years of a Pratt education? Is there a typical pathway that students take? Well, I, I can start. Um, so um, in Pratt, uh, programs are pretty structured. Um, during the first two years, they will be take, the students take uh, the fundamental classes. Um, like all Duke students, they'll be taking writing, um, 
but um, Pratt students would take chemistry um, to physics. They would take um, the first introductory class of their major, at least one during their first year. Um, by the second year um, is when they start to de decide which is the major that they're most interested in, and then they start taking more classes. By junior year, um, they'll be taking electives uh, within their department, and in the last year, they'll be finalizing everything with a design um, course. Vaguely, uh, that would be um, the structure um, and um, requirements that they have to meet. Um, they also have to take uh, five math course credits, actually, yeah, and uh, five social sciences. Um, every program uh, major has at least uh, two free electives between two and four, um, but it's pretty structured. So um, that's in general terms, um, how, it would go, how it would go. But even though it's structured, um, one of the questions we usually get is, could they take a minor or classes uh, from other majors, especially in Trinity and everything is possible. So um, that's actually one of the meetings we would have is planning, uh, planning um, and see how your schedule could fit everything you're interested in. Great, thank you so much. Um, now going off of that, um, can you talk to us a little bit about the first year um, design course that all prep students have to take. What is that, the goal of the class and what have been some of your favorite projects that have come out of that class? Um, engineering 101, so we, so we have, we've offered that course now for I think five or six years, but all students have taken it. This is our first graduating class of seniors where all the first year students will have taken that course. Um, and so now there've been you know, four years of students, every, every, we want all engineers in the fall semester, ideally, um, to be in that course. And I think, you know, this year we had something like 360 first year students and 340 or something of them took it in the fall. Um, some students who already know that they don't want to do engineering, there are a few of those who decide not to take it. And then there's um, a few students who have, you know, have maybe sports schedules or Rossi's got different things that would conflict, um, but we do a pretty good job of having a lot of sections. Um, and the projects are, are those courses are taught um, by faculty in all of our departments. Um, and so we have at least, I think, two or three faculty from each department that are um, teaching or co-teaching sections of those course, that course. Um, and the projects are also varied. There's, there's kind of projects from lots of different um kind of areas there's bme projects there's ec projects there's process projects led by or you know led by clients from the hospital um there's projects led by faculty that have kind of summer um kind of summer research or summer projects um that they are planning um and so so students kind of can choose a project within their section and and choose a project with either in an area they're interested in or in, a, in a, a project that allows them to kind of work at skills that they want to develop. Um, and so that's a good opportunity for students to get, um, get involved in projects in a certain area and then also interact with faculty potentially in an area they're interested in. So that allows students to start to get a feel of, oh, I didn't like this as much as I thought I liked it, or I really love this, this uh, you know, I really love working with Arduino, maybe I want to be a, you know, an ECE major. Um, and so I think that that one of the goals of that course is to, to get students exposed early on in the engineering curriculum before they're, you know, in that first year, there's a lot of prerequisite classes and those aren't all engineering classes. Those are math and physics and, car and um, chemistry, like Carmen said, um, but at engineering 101 gives them a chance to kind of get some hands-on, um, hands-on work. And it's also kind of a, because there's a final project that allows students to really like put as much time you know like get the time they put into it they learn a lot of um they get, they get a chance to really like dive into something and the more time they put into it the more they get out of it yeah i would just add to that um so i think the course is officially called engineering design and communication so they 
learn the design process and all that goes into that. And um, the communication piece, I believe they write reports and this, the presentations that they have to do at the end of the year. Uh, we just had the poster session last week of the, the projects and I was able to, to walk through some of those and two of them that really blew my mind um, was one team had to develop, uh, their client was a gentleman with type one diabetes. And so he had his, um, the, the catheter that has travels, the insulin travels in from, you know, from the thing that he hooks on his belt to his actual body. They needed a cord to retract because the catheter was so long. It's very easy to get caught on doors, on corners, on, you know, whatever he might pass by. So they just developed this retractable apparatus that would help um, wind the catheter tube so that it's not such a mess hanging off of his body. So that was a really one that kind of amazed me. And the other one was um, there's a, I, I can't remember the, the medical terms for it, but there's some sort of abscess or infection that can develop in the back of your throat, like right next to the the thing that it hangs down in your throat. And so they developed um, this kind of this model to help dental students because if you one false move and, and the patient's a goner. So they developed this model for dental students to use to practice to be able to get to the abscess to, to release the fluid. Um, and I, I thought that was pretty impressive. And faculty that were around me that day were, were pretty impressed with with that also. So as Ben said, there's real world clients that they are trying to solve whatever problem or concern, you know, whether it's getting garbage out of a creek or um, I think in the first year, I remember there was a prosthetic arm to help nurses um, learn how to draw blood. Like what they use now, the holes would stay there forever. So whoever the second person was to use that, you know, it's not really, they're not learning anything because the hole is still there. So whatever they developed was something that um, did not leave holes. So they're pretty amazing product. And these students that come in, you know, they're um, first year students. And so they haven't had engineering, you know, maybe some had something in high school, but these are all manageable, um, workable problem that you are in a team trying to solve. And I'm, I'm pretty amazed when I walk around to those poster sessions. Yeah, I agree. I mean, some of the examples, I mean, uh, the topics are so very multidisciplinary and varied in nature. Um, one of the uh, uh, projects I remember was uh, building um, a structure for the lemur center to feed um, all the lemurs in a, in a more natural but not scary way. And um, others, other projects were, um, this year I saw um, one project for the North Carolina Zoo. And it was uh, related to um, uh, an, a play toy that also served to uh, net, uh, basically um, uh, kind of um, uh, well decrease the size of the teeth of, of one of the animals and, and different other um, activities. So it's, it's a very uh, unique way to introduce the students to the engineering design process. Um, in a very team collaborative way. So it's, it's, a, it's a great fun experience where, where um, like my colleague said, um, you're learning um, hands-on. So it's, it's a, a great opportunity. Yeah, and I think the students are very excited to take the course because you get to have impact right away, right? During your first year, um, you get to create something that is going to change something, right? An aspect of someone's life or a community. And I think that's really amazing. Um, so I would also want to know a little bit more about um, some of the engineering options that we have. So we have five majors, right? There's five engineering majors, but there's also a sixth option called ideas. So can you um, or one of you touch on that as well as talk about the four plus one program, if you can as well. So the ideas plan is for the student whose career goals um, cannot be met with one of our structured majors. So um, uh, for example, um, we had um, 
one student in the past that wanted to, uh, was interested originally in BME, but then he wanted to go more into the biosciences and statistics. And, um, and he was involved in research very early on. So um, the ideas plan is developed um, along with a mentor, a faculty mentor from the area. And, um, and there will be a committee um, with which um, you will propose a plan that would satisfy all the major requirements, general major requirements for engineering. And also it will be uh, merged in that, then that specialty that you wanna focus on will be embedded within the plan. Um, it's uh, different from the major plans is that there's not a bit accredited, but it's meant to provide the flexibility to the student to um, develop um, a more unique um, opportunity for them to continue their career plans. And in terms of the four plus one is a master of engineering uh, degree. Um, usually it's about 10 course credits. Um, so um, it's beneficial for Duke students in that they could start taking graduate level courses uh, during their senior year as an undergrad. And that way it could facilitate um, satisfying those requirements in less time. Usually a master of engineering degree is about a year and a half. But if you're able to start sooner, then you could just do an additional year at Duke and complete those requirements. Thank you so much. Now, there's a lot of options out there. Um, so can you talk to us about how students are supported through that process? Um, essentially, what does academic advising look like specifically in Pratt? So we actually uh, launched a new program for advising this year for first year students. Um, they're called 360 Coaches, and so every student uh, coming in, they already received a faculty advisor, and our 360 Coaches are faculty members, um, and so, but our 360 Coach program is meant to um, be very um, aware and attentive to the whole student, so it's not just, you know, typically a uh, undergraduates meet with their faculty advisor once a semester at registration time to talk about registration um, and to get their hold lifted. So they, there's a hold there until they meet with their faculty advisor. What our 360 program hopes to do is to support the whole student and help um, first year students navigate the university, help them with skill building, um, help them just develop a relationship with a faculty member from day one. Um, so it is a new program and we are um, taking, um, you know, all of the uh, recommendations and suggestions and lessons learned as we've gone along. So it may look a little differently next year for our incoming class, but um, right now it's, you know, you'll get a 360 coach and that person hopefully will get to know you really well, which is a little bit different from, like I said, our other structure. Past the first year, students are assigned still a faculty advisor um, in their department. If they have not declared a major yet, they are assigned a faculty member in the department that they think they want to major in, or you know, if they're teetering, we, we do ask them to choose a department just for the sake of finding a, a, an advisor, um, but that, that can easy, easily be changed if the student changes their um, advisor or their, their department, their major. Um, but typically students will meet with their advisor, like I said, once per semester around registration time. Um, we do encourage students to use their advisor to talk more than classes, excuse me, to talk more than classes. Um, you know, those are engineers they're talking to and they have varied experiences, whether in academia, whether in um, industry. And so we encourage our students to use their advisor to talk about things like graduate school or research or internships um, or you know what what they're going to do post graduation to get any type of mentorship that way um, and you know I think what's different from Trinity is that our students do get a faculty member as their advisor from day one when they walk in the door um, even before they're declared majors so they will hopefully, um, you know, have the relationship with one faculty member at, you know, anywhere from um, one to four years, depending on, you know, how things lay out with, with the, the person they're, they're matched with. 
Thank you. And of course, academic support is truly very important um, for all students um, to navigate, you know, these four years. Um, it's, you know, a very new process for most students, well, for every student um, going through college. So academic support is essential. Um, but that leads me to my next question. Um, how does the Pratt School of Engineering um, support historically underrepresented students in STEM? And are there specific programs or extracurriculars geared towards this student population? Uh, so, so, we, so go oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Lupita. I'll add on to, go ahead. Oh, okay, I'll go, <laughs> add on to me. Um, but we do have, um, specific affinity groups. So for their for underrepresented groups, there are student associations, student chapters of professional associations. So we have Society of Women Engineers, um, Society for Hispanic Professional Engineers, um, the National Society for Black Engineers. Uh, those are the specific affinity groups I can think of. And then each major also has a student chapter. So certainly that is open to all students. Um, you know, one thing I find um, a little bit unique in my experience here is that part of our jobs as academic dean, when we are following students, at least academically, we are following all of this, all students. So we are able, if there is any type of academic difficulty anyway, we will um, be able to get that information um, channeled to us and we're able to do outreach. Um, of course, we, you know, we don't know about all students and there are things outside of academics that are can, um, impacting our students that we may not know about at least right away. Um, I know there are many, many resources on Duke's campus outside of engineering and our engineering students are very much a part of the big Duke. Um, you know, we are fortunate that we're a small school within the big school, um, but our students are very much engaged and involved and all of the resources are open to do all Duke students. So if we're not able to identify or find concerns, then um, there are other offices who, who could do that. Um, you know, outside of that, our program, we have, you know, various programming um, that is open to all students. And um, there are some pocket mentorship groups that um, identi identify some um, very specific underrepresented groups that are available to students. Um, so we we do our best and hopefully there's there's a wide enough net that we can support all students um, in all areas of their of their time. Um, and am I missing anything, Ben? Were you going to add? Is there anything you have to add? Well, just like that you said, uh, so engineering students, a lot of some of our programs at Duke are for all students, both tr across Trinity and Pratt. Um, and engineering students participate in, um, you know, programs to support um, students from first generation um, college students through the Rubenstein program, um, students interested uh, in STEM through Spire, uh, Pratt students participate in Baldwin Scholars, um, lots of the kind of uh, support structures that support all students, Pratt students have access to and, and participate in. Um, and then one thing where improve, I think the, the 360 coaching that Lupita was talking about, um, supporting students, at, you know, as soon as they get here, um, uh, both through Pratt advisors, but also kind of through the Duke, all of our Duke resources um, and, and, and helping students, um, you know, in the, that first year of transitioning to college and getting used to the, the heavier math and science curriculum in engineering, and making sure we we offer support and and help students take take advantage of both the kind of the mental health supports on campus, but also the kind of content and academic supports um, early on after they get to do. Great, thank you so much, Ben. All right, so let's talk about and we'll turn it over to student experiences and get a lot of questions about student experiences and perhaps. Um, one of the most common questions that we get is, what is the best way to get involved in research? I would say uh, 
contacting a faculty member whose research um, topics really um, interest you. Um, our faculty are very open and available and, um, and love to talk about their expertise and, um, and their passions in, in lab or research. So I think the first step is to do that. Um, sometimes I will ask uh, when a student doesn't know how to begin to find that information. Uh, the website of each department uh, lists the faculty members um, and each one contains information on their labs, their research, their work, publications, and a lot of extra information becomes available. Um, there are also undergraduate research programs that are um, available for Pratt students. Um, I direct the Pratt Research Fellows Program where juniors, um, students in junior and senior year will be involved in research for a period of a year and a half, including the summer. And that's an in-depth long-term commitment experience. Uh, positives and um, benefits of such an experience is that by having enough time working on a research topic under the supervision of a faculty member, you're able to actually contribute to the topic and learn and go more in depth. But uh, in addition to that, um, students can just do independent studies with a faculty member and receive credit. So they would enroll in the course and work um, for a period of time, at least one semester on that research topic. Um, there are also um, summer programs available at Duke, um, like the Data Plus program, where they can work on multidisciplinary, multi-age type of uh, research projects for about 10 weeks during the summer term. Um, and uh, even earlier on, there are also programs like uh, Bass Connections, in which again, multidisciplinary um, programs in which Pratt students could be working with Trinity students, freshmen could be working with postdocs in a multidisciplinary type of research environment. Um, so there are many, many opportunities um, available at Duke. Thank you, Carmen. Um, I'm also curious, and one of the questions we actually got in the Q&A um, section is um, internship opportunities or co-op opportunities. What are some of those opportunities that are offered um, to Pratt students? We have a lot of students who um, look for summer internships after the first year or after every year, first, second, third year. Um, there are, for first year students, it can be more, uh, can be more, not all first year students are gonna be successful finding an internship, um, but there are also a lot of kind of Duke connected programs like Carmen was mentioning Data Plus or Duke Engage or other things that happen the, the first year, af the year after your first year that can give you some skills that, to make you more attractive for an internship after the second year. Yeah, and there are um, many of our students rely and can go to the career center um, where they have, um, they can start guiding the student on how to search for internships, even for the first year, how to work on their resume and other skills they need. I'll just add, um, so Duke doesn't have co-op programs. Um, typically our students are doing their internships in between their junior and senior summer. Um, as Ben mentioned, sometimes students are able to get internships after the first year. It's not common. It, you know, the, the ones who are getting the internship um, are, are few and far between. So I think, you know, in the first one or two summers that a student has at Duke, there are a lot of opportunities for them to still gain skills and gain experiences that aren't necessarily internships. Um, you know, typically with the engineering internships, um, companies want students to have a little bit under their belts, some more class experience, some more foundational knowledge, and they're not getting into those engineering classes until late sophomore or junior year. Um, so for an engineering student, it is um, typical that that last summer is when they do their internships. Um, and so that is different from Trinity. And um, like I said, freshmen at getting internships after their first year is not a common thing um, at all. Not saying they're not out there or there's not some people who do them. Um, we just, we have a lot of students who feel like they're behind already because they don't have one or they feel like they should. And it's definitely not the norm. Thank you so much, Sophia, for addressing that. 
Um, so another common question that we get is about study abroad, right? Um, for some reason, um, a lot of students believe that if you're an engineering student that you cannot study abroad, what does study abroad look like at Duke for Pratt students? Well, I think about a quarter of our students study abroad, um, usually in their junior year. Um, uh, we uh, That's one of the meetings we do have with a student to develop a plan, um, especially a year before you want to be abroad. That way we would sit down and uh, determine what are the courses you should take before the semester abroad, during and after, so you can remain on track and graduate on time. Um, we have... Um, students that um, have gone uh, all around the world. I mean, I would say, start looking at programs um, in the Global Education Office website, and um, they help you with the start of the plan. They gather, they have gathered information of courses that have been pre-approved in the past, and that gives you an idea of courses you can take, and definitely engineering courses are in there. So it's just a matter of planning, uh, but, um, there are many semester long opportunities students go to um, in Madrid, Germany, um, China. I mean, it's, it's, it's where you wanna go um, and what's available. And then um, there are also summer study abroad opportunities and those have even more flexibility. So students can go and take a math class or even a BME class in certain programs and they can do that over the summer. Thank you, Carmen. Um, another question I have is, what are some common extracurricular activities um, that are available to engineering students that are, are very popular on, amongst them? So I know Duke has a plethora of opportunities for students to get involved in. Um, specifically in Pratt, we tend to have more co-curricular um, opportunities for students to get involved in. So they are using their engineering skills that they're learning learning in the classroom and they're able to apply it to their co-curricular um, activity. So we have um, the CAR team, that's kind of our longstanding program that we've had. They build a formula SAE race car from scratch, from computer drawing to the race car and they race it in Michigan um, every year. We have uh, Duke Electric Vehicles where they're building an electric vehicle and, and racing that. And they, we've had much success. They've won first prize um, before and been in commercials and it was a, it was a really big deal. Um, robotics, students who are interested in robotics. And a lot of these groups are interdisciplinary. So I'm thinking specifically of robotics, there's ME majors, there's ECE majors. Um, in the CAR team, there's definitely interdisciplinary because there are different areas of whatever they're building or working on where it's a different expertise or a different specialty. So a lot of them are interdisciplinary. Um, we have our D to Duke Engineers for International Development where they're building bridges in Bolivia and bringing clean water wells to um, you know, places in Africa and Central America. And they're again, doing it building plans here in Durham and then doing site visits and, and going back and actually doing the build. Um, so it's a pretty, pretty amazing, very amazing opportunities that our, our students are able to get involved in. Um, and I mentioned the professional societies. So student chapters of professional societies within disciplines, within um, underrepresented populations, those are great leadership opportunities. Um, they do a lot of programming. Some of them have their own mentorship programs um, within their organization. Um, those are just a few of the ones that I'm highlighting. I know I'm missing a, a ton other um, opportunities, but you know, both extracurricular, both co-curricular, the opportunities are there within Pratt. And then, as I mentioned, our students are very much involved in the Big Duke um, opportunities and, and activities as well. Great, thank you so much, Lupita. Now, one of the main goals of Duke Engineering is to develop a student's entrepreneurial mindset. Um, so my question is, how does Duke Engineering cultivate a lifelong entrepreneurial mindset? I 
any Ben Carmen. <laughs> um, so well, we have the I and E certificate, and that's been around a little while now. And so, um, you know, a lot of students are coming to Duke already, having either the mindset or having started their business, having started their um, prototype of something. And so, you know, outside of formal programs, I think Duke is very fertile ground for that to happen, just with the faculty expertise to kind of um, be mentors or help them guide them throughout, you know, whatever design or business process. Um, students meet each other and they come up, you know, bring their ideas together and start something there. Um, so formally, you know, students could pursue the IME certificate, but I think there are many, many students um, who are just kind of doing it solo and on their own. And there are competitions they can enter. There are, um, you know, prizes that are that are won to help develop certain programs. There are certain spaces on campus that can help foster and develop. Um, you know, I'm thinking the the foundry, our worker space, um, the collab. We have a student shop. Um, so the the materials and the resources are there. Um, so I think you know, in that regard, we definitely foster it, you know, from day one for those students who have it and are interested and want to pursue something, I think it, they can very easily find connections to make that happen. And, and some of the faculty who are involved in the, a lot of the faculty who are involved in innovation and entrepreneurship um, certificate, the INE certificate that Peter was talking about, are also involved teaching like Engineering 101. Uh, Steve McClelland, who teaches founder, Founders Workshop for the in innovation and entrepreneurship certificate also leads a section of engineering 101 and then some of the faculty involved in engineering 101 are technical mentors to teams or sorry in 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 innovation and entrepreneurship are also technical mentors to teams in engineering 101 and uh, and the teams in engineering 101 that want to keep working on their idea or working on their um, design uh, can take a second or third semester of um, engineering 102, which is a half unit class um, that's mostly is a lab based class where they just kind of work with their team on their design and and some of those teams do things like pursue patents or um, consult with kind of technical mentors in innovation and entrepreneurship. I mean, I, um, I agree. I agree with both. Um, definitely in engineering uh, here at Duke as well as as many other institutions, but um, I think uh, innovation is a result of the creativity. Um, our students will be working uh, from day one in NGR 101, developing solution to problems, uh, developing prototypes. Um, we foment their creativity and the development of technology and development of solutions. So um, even let's say in NGR 101, one of the results was um, one group uh, was um, in the process of, of requesting a patent in one of their designs. So they develop um, a hook that will be um, adjustable, that will be used in museums to highlight, uh, showcase better each painting. So even if from small projects to big projects, um, that could be the result of, of your last design uh, project, could still be you know, um, new products. Um, that you will, could develop into, into your own um, market. And then, um, and then uh, students that are interested in those tracks could take advantage of their social science electives and start taking uh, maybe classes in finance and economics that will be supplemental knowledge um, in addition to their engineering background that will help them when they graduate to pursue those careers. Thank you so much. Now we have about 10 minutes left. Um, I have a couple more questions and then we'll turn over to the Q&A to see if we can answer any questions from there. Um, but one of my last questions is, where do Pratt students end up after four years of engineering? That would be very difficult to say. I would say everywhere. I mean, it's uh, it it really depends on the student case by case. Um, we could have uh, again uh, building technologies. They could be uh, working with electric vehicles. They could be uh, finance. They could be in construction. Uh, I mean, it really depends on their interests. 
Um, and um, many of our students uh, do go to graduate school or a professional degree later on. Um, so it's it's a case by case. Um, Lupita, you were gonna say something? Well, I was gonna ask if you repeat the question. I didn't I didn't hear the question, but I'm assuming you asked where do our graduates go? Is that yeah. that's correct? Yeah. All over. I mean, all of the big names, Apple, Facebook, Google, Amazon, and a lot of startups. Um, and then as Carmen mentioned, a lot are going to grad school, whether it's um in engineering, medical school, law school. Um it's definitely varied. Yep. Yeah, and, and recently, I mean, I think we've always had students go to medical school, um, go to graduate school. Recently, there's been a lot of demand for tech workers. So like ECE students are in high demand. So we've seen kind of a, a, a slow rise in our number of ECE majors. Um, but um, also Duke, Duke sends a lot of students to finance and consulting and engineers are among those students. Um, a lot of engineers are deciding in that those that junior and senior year, like, do they want to keep, you know, pursue a job in engineering or do they want to go, you know, into some other industry? Um, and that's a kind of common poll for our students is to trying to decide what, what they want to do after they graduate. Thank you. Guys. All right. Last question for me, um, might be a hard one. All right. Um, why Duke? Specifically, what can students gain from the Pratt experience that they might not get at other engineering schools? Um, um, I would say they have the benefit of going to an engineering school in a large, or not necessarily large, but in a liberal arts university. And so they're able to take advantage of everything that Duke has to offer and they're not siloed in the engineering school. Um, you know, just by virtue of size, they're going to have their roommates. Most of their friends are likely not going to be engineers. And so they get, they participate in, in all areas of the university. And I don't, you know, I, I would add one other thing that we hear from students that they don't feel that there's the competitive nature here in that they students are not trying to do better than the student next to them, or they're not all competing for one seat. Um, you know, there's no caps on majors that they have to get a certain GPA to get into a major. And so the collaborative nature here is very much felt um, by students and they, they really cite that as one of the reasons that they enjoy their time here. Yeah, just from working with a Duke undergraduate, students um you know there are a lot of really exciting students and students that are really excited about what they're what they're doing um, and i think kind of that's that's one of the real joys of of our job is that we get to kind of you know hear hear those students and interact with those and kind of hear how excited they are about the projects they're working on or the research they're doing or the you know the summer trip they're taking with deed or wh whatever it is um you know duke, duke students are really you know the academic side is a big part of their identity and, and what they want to achieve. And, and um, it's fun working with students that are really excited about um, learning. Um, and so I think that kind of rubs off on, on students and then on, you know, faculty are excited to teach those students. So that's, that's been one thing that I've really enjoyed. Awesome, thank you. All right, let's turn over to the Q&A and see if there's any questions that we can answer. Um, first one comes from Jocelyn. What is something that you wish students knew? This is coming from perspective and current students. Uh, I would say that it's okay not to know uh, what you wanna do right now, um, or even in the first year, but it's okay um, not to have four years planned out when you walk in the door. Um, it's good to, you know, learn about things and, you know, you're going to learn about new opportunities that you ever never knew existed um, before you step foot here. So I think being open, that it's okay to be open and it's okay not to be specifically planned out, um, you know, to the T. It, it's okay to be open and be flexible. Yeah, I mean, I agree with that. With that in mind, I was going to say, you know, explore. 
Um, there are so many things that are going on um, in each department um, all over uh, Pratt and all over Duke. Um, there's so many opportunities. Um, just select the ones that really you feel um, you feel passionate about because you don't want to overcommit, but you want to take advantage of those opportunities. So I would say just explore and um, and choose wisely. Awesome, thank you. Um, another question that we have is how accessible are deans? Do these have a lot of students to help? And can a Duke student seek help from a dean impromptu? Um, we are very accessible. Um, students can ask us questions anytime. You can ask us an email, you can set up a meeting. Um, we'll, that, that will be the short answer of it. Yeah, and we, um, we support each other as a team also. So there are times when maybe one of us has a um, either a bigger caseload going on or because of our areas that we're also um, charged with covering that, um, you know, or someone gets sick or they they have a family obligation. Any one of us can help any student. Um, you know, it's helpful that we develop relationships with our own advisees that we're assigned to, but we can certainly step in and help out for, for one of any of the other deans if they're not available and there's an emergency. Um, so, but as Carmen said, we're very accessible. Um, some of us, well, we all do answer emails at night when we shouldn't, uh, <laughs> but that's not a, that's not a constant thing or a consistent thing. Um, but yeah, we're on email all the time and we're available. We Zoom, we've mastered Zoom. So um, we do a lot of drop-in hours. That's a good opportunity for us to be able to serve um, more students than one student every half hour appointment. So we do a lot of different drop-in events where students can just come in and ask us a question. Um, and so we're those, uh, we find a lot of success with those um, for students who just, just have that one question and want to ask it really quick. Um, that's what we're there for. Great, thank you so much. Uh, now to end it off, um, just one last question because you guys meet with hundreds of students. Um, so I'm curious to know, is there a common characteristics among Pratt students that you have seen over your time as academic dean? I mean, there, there's a lot of a lot of students in engineering. Uh, I think I think they're excited. But the students that you know pursue engineering are excited about it and excited about um, kind of the. Like we'll have students, so so there's student there's certain courses that have like a reputation of being like oh this is a hard course or this is a hard professor, and students kind of you know try to try to um, kind of balance when they take those courses and like make sure that they don't take like three really hard courses in the same semester or something. Uh, but there's there's students you talk to, and sometimes there's like a slightly easier version in one semester than the other semester or something, and there's students who are like you know, they can't wait to take that hard course because they have been dying to learn how to do this, you know, build this processor or, or you know, build a medical device. And I mean, and they're not, they're not like, you know, they're excited to take the hard class because they really want to learn it. And I think that's something that I think uh, Pratt students, um, you know, they're, they're, they didn't come to, they didn't choose an engineering degree because they wanted like, something easy, you know they really want to learn and they want to like challenge themselves and um and i think that's something that that is kind of consistent across the majors um is that under their pratt students are choosing engineering because they're like excited about learning and excited about going in depth in, in something you know and what they're learning awesome thank you all so much for your time i really appreciate it um just to end it off um, let me go towards the end. All right. So thank you so much, Lupita, Ben, Carmen, for your time. Uh, everyone, amazing questions. Um, you can reach out to us at Discover Duke. Um, email us at undergrad-admissions at duke.edu if you have any questions um, that we haven't answered. Um, we're so happy that you were able to be here with us um, during this one hour panel. Uh, thank you for your time. Have a good evening, wherever you may be at. 
Um, and we will see you soon. Thank you. Thanks.